Hey everyone, today we're going to continue working on our portfolio page. If you haven't checked out any of the previous videos here, go ahead and click on the link above and check out the other two videos before you come back to this video. Today we're going to be working on different widgets inside of Webflow here, and we're using Webflow to build our portfolio. Great website, it offers a lot of flexibility, and you can sign up for a test account and a free account and follow along with what we're doing here. And today we're going to be building sample cards that will give information about our projects, our sample projects, before uh, a user will actually click on it. So it'll give some information and they click on it and it will take them to the sample course if possible. So let's go ahead and get started here. All right, welcome back. If you haven't checked out my website already, go ahead and check out my website at learningdojo.ninja. Here you can check out previous blog posts, including the other parts of my creating a portfolio series here. You can also check out different templates. This includes Articulate Storyline 360 templates, XAPI, and video templates. And you can also check out full courses if you're a new user to Storyline, Captivate, XAPI, or anything like that. You can check out these full courses, custom SCORM, custom video as well, and get some more information there. We're going to go back into Webflow, what we've been working with, and we're going to continue working on our portfolio. But before I do that, let me go to the sample one, just so you can get an idea of what we're going to be building here. And I'm going into my sample Webflow project here, and I'm going to click on the eyeball up on top, which allows me to get a live preview of this. And you can see there's our big splash screen, which we built in a couple of videos ago. We also built the about me. I need to fix that size of that image. I'm not sure what's going on there. But today we're going to start to build these cards. And the way that we want to build them is to make them reusable. We want to set up the style. We want to create the images. And then we want to be able to replace these and use these easily. And we're going to show you how to do that here. So I'm going to go back into Webflow. I'm going to click on the menu and go back into the dashboard. And let's continue working with the portfolio project that we got going here. So you can see there is our splash screen. There's the get to know me, which we uh, added last time as well. And we're gonna start to build that other section with the cards. And then in future videos, we'll talk about publishing. We'll talk about you know adding additional widgets if we need to. But let's go ahead and first of all, add a section. So clicking on the plus icon, we're gonna add a new section which I can click and drag and drop down here if I wanted to. And you can see that it will add that section for me. Now I'm getting a little bit of a, a background. I think it might be the background here, or maybe when I preview it, let's see. No, it looks fine there. All right, so let's go ahead and start to build out this section. The next thing I wanna do is, cause I also wanted to have padding on the left and the right, like you're seeing here. So let's go ahead and drag in a container. Now this container is not the same size as the container above here. The container above, I'm gonna click on this and go into that container here. And the container above, that has about a thousand. And I think we can stretch this one out, this container to be about a thousand on the max width as well. So I just entered in a thousand. And so that way we can have it even as we go down here on the same width. And then it will just keep it centered as well. All right, so let's come in here and let's click on plus. And let's go in and add a couple different things. We can add rows, we can add columns if we wanted to, but I'm not gonna worry about that. We're gonna worry about the layout using something called grids. And uh, we're going to take what we build now and we're going to make it a component. And we'll talk about what components are and everything later on. But for now, I just wanna build that initial card that has the image, that has the text, and it has the, the button to launch. I'm not gonna fully worry about the layout right now, but let's go ahead and at least add a column and let's just keep it at 2-2. Two, two. Again, we're gonna change this up and we're gonna learn about grids. And one of the nice things about grids is the flexibility and layout, but we're gonna just stick with the card for now. All right, so if you remember that card had an image, it had a title, it had some text as well, and then it had a button. So we're gonna build that initial layout now, and then we're gonna create those items and we're gonna make them reusable and so we can easily just switch out new images and new text and other things. Now I am going to be using some sample images. You can take some screenshots of you know, previous projects that you've worked on, or you can go to pexels.com and you can download some images that you think might fit for your projects, but you're just gonna need to have a couple different images. 
and I have those images right here and just have those ready to go. So I'm going to come in here and click on plus. We're going to go in and uh, just drag in an image first of all. And so now I can click on choose image. I'm going to upload that image or one of those images here. I think that's good enough for now. We can go ahead and just resize this, make it smaller. And we're going to add some text below as well. So let's just click and drag a heading. And that heading, let's make it, we don't want it to be heading one. The heading one and the kind of the hierarchy of what you use is important because that's how Google makes sense of your website. It will take uh, the heading ones as like the title of your website and then the heading twos, the heading three. So make sure you don't use everything as heading one because it might confuse uh, Google when it's doing their SEO. Now I'm going to go ahead and drag in, and I'm not worried about the layout for now, but I'm just going to drag in some paragraph text here, and that will be right after my heading. Once you get down to the bottom of the website here, sometimes it's hard to like know exactly where you're dragging it. You could always drag it into the navigator if you wanted to. The important thing is we're replacing this inside of a column one for now. In fact, we want to add some styling to the entire column. We're going to add some drop shadow around the column and we're going to add a button. So it's actually better if we group this inside of a div tag. I right now have just been placing it inside of a column, but that div tag is going to become important for styling. So I'm going to actually rearrange some things right now and place this all inside of a div tag. It's probably better if you know that it's going to be inside of a div tag before you do this. And the div tag is really to group the elements together, to group the images and the text and other things together and to add some styling to that parent. I'm going to go ahead and click on plus here. And I'm going to grab that div block for now. And I could just drag it anywhere for now. And then I could just actually click and drag inside of that div tag. So just make sure everything is inside of there. Now I'm going to, you can see that I kind of rearranged some things. So I can just rearrange it right here and make sure that the image is on top. The heading is on bottom and then our text is right there. Now in the navigator, let's make sure we go back to this div block and we're going to call this a card because we're going to add some special styling to this card like drop shadows and other things, but it also allows us to adjust the width and other things inside of here as well. Just make sure you add that special class there. Now, if you're not familiar with what classes are, they allow you to uh, create a style, a specific style that can be applied to other things as well. So in this specific style, you can say that cards have a background shadow. They're only this size and other things. So it comes in handy if you're working with the same style across multiple objects on your website, which in this case we're, we are. All right, so I'm going to go click on plus and we're going to add one more thing here. We're going to go ahead and add a button. This is going to be the button that launches the sample course or information or like a PDF or something like that. We want to make sure that we have that there. And in fact, let's just say launch, not all capital, but launch course. And there we go. All right, so we have the basics down. We have the image, we have the title text, we have the uh, description text, and we have the button. But I want to do some kind of rearranging here to make this look a little bit better. I want the image to take up the full width. I want the, uh, the padding, the margin between, like the spacing between the text and the image to be a little bit cleaner as well. So let's clean that up before we make this reusable. Let's go ahead and just remove some of the margin. You'll notice that a margin, the default margin for a heading one is to have 20 pixels on top and 10 pixels down at the bottom. I wanna make sure that this is a little bit more even here. So you can see that it's the spacing is there. And also the paragraph has 10 pixels down at the bottom. And I'm okay with that because that will push the, the button down a little bit more. If I wanted the button to go down even more, I could even stretch that out a little bit further if I wanted to there. All right, now I want this image to actually take up the full width. And so uh, there's a couple different ways to do this. We've talked about this before, which is the flex box. And the flex box allows me to kind of rearrange and play with uh, different things a little bit easier. I don't know if that will be the perfect example here, but I'm gonna just go ahead and enable the flex box under the display settings. And instead of horizontal, where it'll stack everything side by side, we want to make sure that it's vertical here. And now if I click on this, I could go into my width and set this at 100%. And if I do that, it will fill the entire width 
um, to 100% here, which is nice because if I go in and I change the, not the card, but if I change, let's actually go into just this one column. So column one, if I change the settings in here and say, hey, I want this to be a little bit smaller, notice that the image will actually stay at 100%. That's exactly what we want with that image is it's set to 100%. So no matter how many cards we have stacked up here, it's going to always have that image full, full size, basically. I'm going to adjust the color of this, and you'll also notice that the button text, because we set it as a flex box, the button actually expanded to be the entire width as well. I may wanna come in here and change the text to be centered on that button. So clicking under the typography and going to align, I like it taking up the full width, so I'm good with that. If I go into the diff block as well, so the card there, I could always make sure that there's some padding on the sides. Let me hold down the option button here. And I'm always going to make sure that there is 15 pixels on the left and the right. Just so if there's cards stacked up one after the other, there's a little bit of spacing in between those cards. There's a couple other things I wanted to do with this card. So with that card selected, I'm going to go ahead and select this to have a drop shadow. So I'm going to click on box shadow here. I'm not going to have any distance there. So it's going to just be a full uh, around the sides there. And now I'm going to make sure that the blur is updated here. It may be that the black is not a full black, but it has some transparency under the opacity there. All right, so let's preview that. And I'm still getting this black line here for some reason. And I also do have a problem that I added some padding inside, which padding actually adds some spacing inside of the card. And I forgot about this. And we want to have spacing outside of the card, and that's margin. So padding happens inside of whatever element you had selected. Margin will space out the elements outside of that object. So we need to fix that as well. And I need to figure out where this line is coming from as well. So I'm going to go back into the card. And so let's go ahead and change that padding back to zero. Which you can click on this just to kind of break what it was before you can just click on that reset button and it will just take it back to where it was before. So I'm gonna hold down the option key and we wanna make sure that there will be margin, the outside of that card, and now we don't have that spacing inside there. However, we do want some spacing on this heading and we want some spacing on this text. I can either go to each individual one and I can add some spacing to each individual one or I can create another div block here and add space and put these elements inside of that div block and uh, add some space in there. So either way, um, I think it's easier if you add another div block and just put those in there so you're creating some hierarchy here. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on plus. We're gonna add another div block here and we're just gonna drag and drop those elements inside of that div block, including the button. And then we're gonna go up to that div block and we're gonna add some spacing Holding down the option button, we're gonna add some spacing on the left and the right. Now it doesn't take up the full width anymore because that's, um, the flex box is applied to the parents and now not to this div block. I could come in here and I could just go to that div block and then switch that over to a flex box and then vertical and that will bring that back to what I had before there. That works. If I go back into this card, let me go back into here. And if you're, if you're having trouble following along, pause it, try out what I did, and um, make sure that you do that. So it does take a little bit of setup, just so you know here. So I'm going to go back to the card, and I'm going to add some margin on the top and bottom. So holding down the option button, we're going to add probably about 15. There we go. So now there's some margin on the top and the bottom, and probably need to add some padding on the bottom here as well. Padding, let's just up that to 15 or 16, just so it's all even there. Probably don't need to have it, I think I have some spacing on the top. Probably no longer need to have that margin on the top and the bottom for that heading. You may just have to play around with it and see what works there. To me, I, th I think that looks good. So we have an image, we have a heading. Let's actually go in and change the font color to be slightly lighter on the text there just so the heading stands out a little bit more now i'm going to come in here and just name this project one and i'm going to leave this as is for now 
We're also going to leave the hyperlink if you click on that button and go into the gear icon. We're just gonna leave this as a hyperlink right there and that will link to a PDF or whatever we need it to to have information about it. But now if I come into here, there is something called symbols inside of Webflow. Symbols allows us to actually go in and make whatever we've created here, just so we don't have to recreate it every single time, we can make it reusable. So now I can actually take this and copy and paste this and just swap out the image and swap out the text and other things pretty easily. And we'll learn about that in the next video. We have our initial layout for the card and we're good to go there. And now we can copy this and paste it. Now I don't have to actually create a symbol here. I could actually copy this block and I can paste it. But the nice thing about the symbol is I can drag this into any page and I can just quickly change out a few things through a form and I don't have to recreate everything from scratch here. So we have our card built and ready for one of our sample projects. And again, in the next video, we're gonna talk about how to make that reusable using symbols and how you can just take that and drag and drop it. And then after that, we're gonna talk about how to do several of these cards and lay them out with uh, a grid system and so it will automatically adapt to the screen sizes and everything. So we still got plenty to cover. Uh, make sure that you like and subscribe to this channel so you can get alerted of all new videos that come out. And let me know if you got stuck with anything down in the comments below. And let me know if there's anything specific that you want on your portfolio page that you wanna see here as well. So comment down below. But as a reminder, if you haven't checked out my website, go ahead and check out learningdojo.ninja. You can check out my blog with all of the previous portfolios. You can also check out templates on Articulate Storyline. You can also check out courses on Articulate Storyline 360, Adobe Captivate, XAPI Fundamentals, Articulate Rise, Custom Squirm, and HTML5 video. Thanks everyone for checking out this video, and I'll see you in the next one.